go back again to a few things that I've discussed before. First of all, the essence of meditation is bringing the mind back to the body. And the nature of the mind is that it's always wandering and it tries to find happiness where it can't. So because of that, we are learning in meditation to come back to ourselves and to wonder less and find more happiness inside ourselves. This process was called by Lopu or called in the Buddhist text, right concentration or Samma Samadhi. And Lumpu, he used the word stillness or standstill. We also talked previously about things to take into account when you want to integrate meditation in your daily life. This was actually one of the first sessions we had. When you are meditating, you should make sure that your home, your workplace are well uh, um, adjusted for meditation, that you have some corner or some place where you can meditate well. And your conversations and the people you associate with is certainly also going to affect your meditation, as is the, your health. So take good care of all of that. And your meditation will easily be able, you will easily be able to integrate it into your daily life when you set the right time or when you make the right priorities for yourself. Community can, of course, help in this process, which is why we are here meditating together. When you meditate together in a group like this, it's like an encouragement when you have people to remind you of meditation. Today we'll talk about the hindrances that might pop up during the meditation and cause you to get stuck, which can sometimes happen. So let's talk about that. First of all, let me say that uh, when we talk about the hindrances in meditation, it's not always necessary to stop at every moment when we are meditating, uh, when we have a hindrance. Usually most of the time we can just simply allow everything to happen and unfold naturally and we do not have to pay much attention to our distractions and other hindrances but it happens sometimes that our mind gets so distracted so stressful or so sleepy that we cannot really continue these are the five hindrances which can sometimes occur when we are uh, finding it hard to really move on in meditation, then we need to move back, move back a little, just step back a little and start over again. Starting over again, allowing ourselves to step back one step and then moving forward again is a very good practice in meditation. This is sometimes called uh, by our current abbot in Thailand and teacher uh, to um, start over again. This is a process of starting over again and he considers that a very important part of the meditation practice. So learning to start over is very important. We should not uh, be afraid of discarding our current experience in order to start over when you find that there is something not right. However, if you do find that the hindrances that pop up into your mind, uh, distractions or other hindrances are just minor hindrances and they don't really make you get stuck, then don't be uh, alarmed or discouraged by that. Just continue. So what uh, this, so there's a bit, it's a bit funny uh, presentation. Uh, uh, one, one of my volunteers made it a long time ago. Uh, it's a bit funny, but uh, it's, uh, it's just uh, how it is, and uh, I, I think it's okay. Um, so uh, these are the five hindrances that we might come up, uh, that might appear in our meditation. Sensual desire is the first one. The desires of our senses. We might desire for something or we might miss somebody. It will anger towards people, doesn't require much explanation. Dullness and drowsiness, in some translations, this is translated as sloth and torpor. 
very ancient English and still used by many uh, meditation teachers uh, when they refer to this hindrance. I prefer more modern English. Restlessness and worry is uh, also a hindrance which uh, may underlie other hindrances and it is uh, the sort of hindrance that may also get you stuck. Doubt can underlie all of these hindrances as well and doubt where we are talking about here is the sort of doubt that makes you hesitate and not commit. Now let's just go through this quickly. Uh, now the the hindrances are sometimes called part of the process that we call defilements, which are like negative emotions and unrealistic perceptions that cause us to make mistakes in life. So it's not only about meditation, these are actually, these are actually things that affect our happiness in general. So we, even in our daily life, we might find ways to want to deal with them so we can find more happiness and clarity of mind. In fact, the Buddha, he says that the defilements or the hindrances of the mind are the very cause we suffer and there is no enemy in our lives that can cause us so, to, to suffer so much as our own mind. So the first one is sensual desire. It causes us to want to desire for people. It can also cause us to miss somebody that we are not with today, perhaps due to the corona crisis, we are missing somebody. This can also cause us to find it hard to continue meditating. If that is the case, uh, we should sometimes just uh, take a short uh, moment um, that we really reflect on the impermanence of all things. We can think about that all things in life they must come to an end. People all grow old. People all die. We have to let go of people someday. So even if we are missing somebody now, we do not need to be too much preoccupied with that. It won't help us to understand the other person better or to love them more. It will only cause us to suffer. So sensual desire or missing somebody is not always very helpful in meditation. It may also uh, be like in the form of desiring from somebody that you've just met or that you are in love with. This can also become a hindrance in meditation or simply desiring for a meal that you have not had for a long time. <laughs> Maybe that's also something during this crisis. Anyway, these are sort of hindrances that might pop up. And uh, it's important that we allow our mind to come to a more, uh, that, that we somehow are able to, to take a short break for ourselves, maybe reflect a little, open our eyes a bit, allowing some air and some light to come in so that we can proceed in meditation. And that actually holds for most of these hindrances. But there are some specific uh, uh, tools for every hindrance as well. Ill will can be angry, anger when we are angry about somebody. And this is very human. It can happen to anyone, even monks. But we can learn to deal with it. And then we learn to deal with it. It does have less of a hold of a grip on us. If your mind is so angry or so frustrated that you can't move forward in your meditation, then take a step back. Don't push it. And just allow your mind to be a bit more spacious and open. We can do that by visualizing, for example, that we are in a spacious place. You can even meditate outside if you like if that is not a problem in your area. And uh, we can imagine a blue sky, allow our mind to be more spacious and perhaps learn to develop loving and kind thoughts. Even if you cannot forgive somebody, you can still practice kind thoughts to anybody else. And then perhaps it also becomes easier 
it will certainly become easier to also learn to gradually forgive somebody you are very angry with. There is also a lot of discussion whether we should forget when we talk about forgive and forget, or should we just forgive and not forget. It's really quite a moot discussion because we do not really need to be concerned about that. Forgiving and forgetting is about the emotional part. You still need to make choices, of course, but the reason why we say forgive and forget is sometimes it's best just to not pay attention to something when it's making us very angry. So ill will is an equality that is very important to deal with when it really makes us get stuck in meditation. So this little man here manages to deal with that very well. Okay, then there is dullness and drowsiness. Normally there's a balance in meditation between mindfulness and well-being. This balance is very essential in meditation. So if we are too much on the side of well-being or sabai, then we will end up being drowsy. Dullness, on the other hand, can mostly appear in the morning uh, when we are actually, when we just slept and our mind is just still in a sort of high, sort of twilight zone, <laughs> halfway between sleep and awake. So that is what we call uh, drowsiness, or sorry, dullness. Uh, there may also be tiredness of the body and mind um, causing us our mind to be either restless or drowsy. The way to deal with it is when we really get stuck, we just fall asleep all the time, then make sure you can just maybe take a short walk, maybe wash your face a little and start over again if that's possible. But if it's not possible, then it may also just be helpful to reflect what caused the, this drowsiness in the first place. It's usually a health thing. Are we eating too much or too little before we meditate? Are we sleeping in the right measure, the right amount? And are we really exercising enough in our lives? All of this can affect our meditation. And there is also the case, it's a bit rare, but it can happen that some people force their mind so much that it becomes rigid and drowsy as well. Restlessness is also very essential, very often uh, can be a problem. Restlessness is like the physical part when your body is restless, when your body is not at ease. So restlessness is not really uh, as much uh, uh, mental as a physical part, but uh, when we call it mental, we might call it stress, right? There's also stress in the mind. When we talk about the physical part, it's important that we find a position, a posture in meditation that is not too demanding, but at the same time is the right balanced way. In the long term, I do recommend everyone to try to meditate on the floor in some position, whether simply in a cross-legged position or perhaps kneeling with a pillow underneath or a bench. There are meditation benches that can be bought online. So um, it's important to find the right posture for yourself, but it can also be that you are simply restless because you're forcing yourself too much or you, are, um, you have eaten something the wrong or something like that. There may also be a physical cause in the sense of that you made a uh, maybe a bit uh, unbalanced in your body. When you are mentally uh, uh, worried or not restless in the sense of physical restlessness, but mental worry, then that can be something that uh, is also uh, can affect you very much. If you're very worried, for example, you have a job interview the next day and you find it hard to really uh, uh, meditate. Some people are having problems during this corona crisis, causing them not to meditate very well uh, at all or get stuck in meditation. 
if you already get stuck and you can't really move forward in meditation, that means you can't, you can't really think or relax at all, then just take a moment for yourself. Don't force it. Just open your eyes a little or maybe entirely and allow the light to come in. And it may be helpful for us to just look around a bit. If that is not sufficient, then walk around a bit. Take some time. Do not uh, give up on meditation, but allow yourself different ways. For example, we might just walk around a bit and then try again, or we might uh, just uh, meditate with open eyes for a while until we find we are more at ease, we have less worries and concerns, and then it's easier to meditate, then we can continue. So these are all things that our abbot and teacher in Thailand recommends. So these are uh, from his experience as a teacher for many years. It may also be helpful to reflect on the impermanence of things. For example, if you're stressed about a job interview or even the COVID-19 crisis, well then remember that all things these things too must pass. Everything is impermanent. If you have a problem in your life, well, can you do something about it? Yes, then don't worry. If you can't do anything about it, no, then don't worry. If you don't have any problem in your life, no, well then don't worry. Whatever the case, there's never a need to worry. You can always think about it like this. In other words, there are two problems in life, those you can do something about and those you can't. And in both cases, there's no need to worry. Then there's the other part when we are not really uh, stressful, but distracted. This may sometimes be called ADHD in the present day, or simply in Thai language, they sometimes they just use the word, the long word, hyper. But uh, it's, it can sometimes be that we are distracted but it's not really um, stressful. In the, such a case, it can be similar to being uh, worried in the sense that we might open our eyes or take a walk, take a stroll, but uh, there's no need to reflect on the impermanence of things. That's not gonna help. You need to have less thoughts, not more. And another thing is that uh, it, it's important that when we open our eyes that we focus on something. So you might want to look at a Buddha image or some other thing that inspires you to feel more happy and comfortable. So I once had an ADHD uh, uh, woman, a person with that uh, condition, uh, which uh, was very, made it very difficult for her to meditate. So she was not able to guide her mind to the center of the body at all, not even to her body. Uh, apparently. So I told her that she should meditate with open eyes and just looking at a Buddha image, which in her case she was fine, quite happy to do. But if you are uh, more accustomed to looking at another kind of image that is inspiring to you, that is okay as well. And she was able in that way to meditate uh, through just opening with her eyes open. She was able to deal with her condition better not by using traditional meditation with eyes closed, but with eyes open looking at something. So that made her more relaxed and I recommended her that if she could uh, continue this practice, then when she was more at ease, she could close her eyes. Then there's doubt. Doubt is really difficult to do it because we often are unaware of it. Doubt is not so much the fact that you doubt something on based on reasonable doubt, as they call it in law, but rather a sort of sense of hesitation or of not wanting to commit. Sometimes people are not, don't want to commit to anything. They just like to freelance, maybe meditate a bit like this, meditate a bit like that. That is okay for a while, but at a certain point you need to commit yourself to a certain practice to really be able to gain the benefits. Also, there may be a problem when we are meditating a little longer and sometimes our experiences become more diverse. 
we sometimes have the experience that we are floating or that we are falling down or something like that. These are illusory, illusory experiences which can be distracting and can cause us to doubt about ourselves and our practice. So in that case, it's important that we consult with a teacher regularly. So whatever questions you have in meditation that causes you not to meditate, you best ask a teacher about that. But if you are simply in the habit of not wanting to commit, perhaps you should reflect on why you meditated, why you started to meditate in the first place. And often reflecting on your own commitment and aspirations can help you to get less hesitant about life in general and about meditation practice specifically. So these are all some good suggestions for hindrances that might pop up in meditation. As I said, uh, if you have these hindrances just in a minor sense and a minor extent, then don't worry about it. Just continue the meditation. Allow it to happen, but don't get involved with it. And, but if the hindrance really is becoming a serious obstacle, then you need to back off a little and then continue as soon as you're ready after you've dealt with the hindrance properly. These are some examples of how you can uh, during the stages of meditation can gradually uh, uh, evolve in your meditation or develop your meditation. Um, this is sometimes called the stages of absorption in meditation. This can happen after we've dealt with the hindrances properly. These are some metaphors for the trained mind that is free from hindrances. I think this is quite nice to look at. But uh, I will just close uh, I would just, uh, I'll, I would, I won't mind to send these uh, notes uh, of this presentation to you so you can look at the details of some of this. There's a lot more detail in there. And uh, I will close with a quote. The taste of the Dhamma surpasses every taste, which is the word of the Buddha, which means that the practice of meditation and the happiness that it gives us is better than any other taste in life. So I think that is a very wonderful quote. And let's just finish with that. Do you have any questions or comments about this presentation and the hindrances in meditation?